it's obviously a great time to have you back in the country. I know this was this tour was supposed to happen back in 2020, right? Obviously, for COVID reasons, it couldn't happen. So it's great to have you back. Yeah, man. Uh, Matt Matt uh, is a legend, man. Uh, he he stuck with with us for about three years. It was May 2020. This tour was booked, announced yeah. on sale, and every three four months during the pandemic, he would always uh, touch base and say, "Hey, don't want to cancel. This is legit. It's postponed." And he stuck through the whole time, and we're very happy to come back. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember seeing you guys oh, many years ago, probably over 10 years ago at the Soundwave Festival. And um, obviously that was a while back. But uh, what's some of your previous experiences in Australia been like over the years? This is our eighth time in Australia. Um, very lucky to, to, to come eight times. Uh, first time was way back in 2005, so 18 years ago. Us and Trey and Norman Jean, that was our, our, our debut in Australia. And that was a fun tour. Mm. Uh, no, nothing but great memories from them. And then we we, we really kind of like front loaded it. We did a lot of tours almost every year uh, from that from 2005 through 2012. We were there. Um, you know, we, took, uh, we did two, one, one headlining tour. We took out Walls of Jericho. And then we did a co-headlining tour with Black Dolly Murder. Uh, both slamming tours. Um, Mind Snare was on the one with what was Jericho, an Australian band. Yeah, and then we did uh two two Soundways, a tour of Kill Switch and Lamb of God, which is epic. And man, it was just it's been a uh, it's the show the the tours we've done in Australia have been have been great, and um, we haven't been since 2015, so it's uh it's been an unwelcomed dry spell for us in Australia and we're, we're very excited to come back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's been a while. Um, what's been, uh, what, is there a particular maybe story or highlight from some of the tours in Australia that you maybe can recall and share with us at all? I mean, a whole bunch, man, from, from playing gigs to just experiencing the country. Um, I mean, you're from there, so it might not seem so cool to you, but you know, <laughs> your, your wildlife is very unique. Um, and every city being, you know, every, every, every major, major city we play is on the coast yeah. and every city has a casino or a beach. Mm -hmm. or a zoo. And these aren't things that you get typically around the world. So it's just like, it's, it's, uh, there's a vacation element to these cities for us. Yeah. Um, but the shows are ripping. They're like anywhere in the States or anywhere in Europe, but they're, they're great metal hardcore shows. So it's uh you get you get the best of both worlds. You get to experience something different that you're not used to seeing in the in your daily life. Then you get to play a killer show at night. So it's uh it's a place we've we've uh we've loved since day one. And you know, like I said, it's our eighth time back. And I'd I'd go every year if 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 people would have us. So it's uh it's a it's a really uh pleasant place for us to 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 put in the in the in the tour schedule. Uh, what about the Australian crowds, you know, compared to like the US crowds or the European crowds? Um, how do you sort of find their response? Is it more rowdy or is it more calm? Or how do you, how do you think of it? I feel it, it's everywhere we play in the world, we get a very similar reaction. Um, in the early days, because the band started in 98, um, our first time in Europe was 2002. And I noticed that the, the pits were a little bit different um, than we knew in the States. A little more bouncy, um, but then as soon as the internet really, you know, YouTube and you know, socials took off, when people saw what you do to certain styles of music, it just seems like it's almost a Groundhog Day every show we go to. And I'm not saying that in, in a negative way. I'm just saying that people react a very similar way. You know, sing along. There's, there's, there's both you know, push mosh and the, the hardcore dancing. Um, so we get we get all those elements all all in the show, and it's um, as long as long as we bring bring the fire people react and have a good time with us. And that's, that's what we're, uh, we most, uh, enjoy. And sorry, I went off at, uh, with stories about Australia tours, things that stand out. Um, yeah, shows are great. Um, I remember we played a bunch of great shows there, but there's one when it was an unfortunate thing that sticks out to me every time is that it was an off day of the sound wave. I think it was on nine and we were doing off days with Lamb of God and, uh, in flames and for some reason i think it was maybe sydney doesn't really matter but we went on right at doors so it was like 700 people lined up outside but we we're playing in front of nobody no one was in the building yet yeah so buzz the guitarist he went outside because on wireless and he played the first three songs of the set 
to the to the the line outside. So <laughs> cool. um, I did the ferry uh, with Daniel, who was a Norman Jean in 05. Eventually went with uh, Every Time I Die. He's playing a bunch of bands. Um, we took the ferry to Manly Manly Beach or Manly Island and mm-hmm. did that whole thing. So it's really cool to to, to kind of have that experience uh, with the Bon Scott's grave, of course. Um, yeah, and all the zoos. We've, we've held koalas. We, when Gene Hoagland filled in for us. It's like a, a band shot with Gene Hoagland and us holding koala. So that that typical tourist type shit that bands post all the time. And that, yeah. that's because you, you don't go there that often. So it's it's fun to experience that kind of stuff. Um, but the shows are always killer, man. And I, I remember um, the sound wave of 2009 was a, a big standout for us because that was a, a really high point of our career. We put out the March the year before. Mm-hmm. And that that tour is pure fire for us. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, so this time around, then, uh, what can we expect to see as far as set lists and, and stuff like that? It's a mix. We're doing a song from almost almost every record of ours, um, leaning heavily on uh, the oncoming storm and the eyes of fire. If you know those records, mm-hmm. uh, because we have Mike Justin back on drums, and he was yes. in the band from 2003 until 2007. And he played on those two records and he was, you know, heavy playing the earlier materials. So we're actually bringing back some earlier material from Stings of Conscience and the EP that followed after it. Uh, we're playing a song called The Charm, which has we haven't had that in set list in probably 15 years until, until Mike came back this summer. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're leaning heavily on the some of the older stuff, but we are playing stuff off our last record, Extinctions. And we are doing, uh, uh, we're, we're debuting a new song from our, our upcoming record, which comes out in May. Uh, it's not announced yet, but it's about to be announced during this tour. Uh, the record's called "The Wretched, The Wretched, The Ruinous," and the title track is going to be played on that on that tour. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was going to ask because there there has been word that you guys have been working on some new material, though. So I did want to ask, you know, uh, when the album can uh, be released. And uh, you're saying some May of, of next year, then, right? May of this year. So oh, sorry, uh, this year. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. January now. Yeah. Um, uh so yeah the record's been done uh since june um and all the artwork everything's all submitted everything's good it's the the right now the release date's may 5th but as we know things can change until it's until it's finally announced but that is the plan right now and i know the single's coming out during this tour we're shooting a video in japan days before we touch down in australia so uh as far as i know all systems go for uh, early May. I think May fifth is the date that their uh, Central Media is aiming for. Um, and man, I, 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 we are we couldn't be more excited to show people this record because it's uh, it's a long time in the making. Our last record was twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um, we took the pandemic to just write a record. And Buzz, I, I'll give a lot of credit to Buzz. Buzz, Buzz really went um, outside of his comfort zone to make. A unique sounding unearth record so you can tell it's unearth but it's different he set limits on himself to not do not not, not rely on certain you know comfort zones for him and to push himself into to new territory by him doing that it made me push into new territories vocally and lyrically so it's we're, we're excited i mean of course it's our eighth record so mm-hmm. every time you write a record you think it's 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 the shit right so yeah. um be emotionally invested um but there's something about this record that's that's that stands out extra to us. So uh, we're we're hoping it's, it's well received, and uh, we we think it will be. Uh, we're just more excited for people to hear it. So uh, we're, we're going to be playing some some new stuff on this tour. Uh, speaking of this sort of the writing process and coming up with new ideas and trying to push yourselves to sort of new territories, is that a difficult process for you guys now that you've sort of been doing this for quite a while now? Is it getting easier or harder as the years go on? For me, it seems like every record is the same torturous uh, process. <laughs> um, Buzz generally provides the bulk of the riffs. Um, you know, he's he's always been you know a good three quarters of the riffs, um, and then wh- whoever the guitar player is, Ken, Ken was always the g- guy before. But this record, Buzz wrote one hundred percent of of the music, and I was coming in after the song was structured. We all agree on a structure. Buzz comes up with kind of a uh, his his idea of a structure. This is how this is how the band's always always operated, and then we we always trade back and forth on how the structure should be. So generally, it'll change from what he gives us, but the blueprints there, and then we'll bring it to the producer, uh, whoever it may be. And past two records now, it's been Will Plotney, uh, who's great. And once we 
once the, the structure is set in stone, because this whole time I'm working on vocal patterns, but once it's set in stone, that's when I can finally get comfortable. I'm like, all right, this is how the song goes. And I got these patterns already. And then, then I can get a tone for how the lyrics are going to be. Because uh, I, I like to get the, the emotional vibe of the record and the song before I write the lyrics. Um, so it's, I put so much thought and effort and uh, energy into the lyrics, which I know so many vocalists do that um, I don't want to sing about something that I'm not passionate about. So if I'm not, mm. if, if it's not good, then I just can't write it. So it's, it's sometimes it's a painstaking uh, process and you hate it during the process. But once you've done, you're so elated that you went through that. Like, man, I've fought through this thing. Yeah. And now I have a product that I'm, I'm enjoying and other people are enjoying. So it's a, it's a funny thing, man. It's it, when you're doing it, you hate it. And you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> but then when you finish, you're like, man, I'm so fucking psyched. I did this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a weird relationship. Uh, what, where's the, where does the inspiration for you come from? Um, a lot of places, man. I, I grew up, uh, my dad's a, a rock and roller. It's a few thousand vinyl records would always play rock in the house. So I grew up with that element in the house. And then as I just got older, I, I you know, gravitated towards friends that liked rock and metal. Their, their parents might have as, as well. And, uh, that was second or third grade. My, my best friend in elementary school, his older brother showed us Iron Maiden and I fell in love. Uh, I was run to the Hills and I was like, that's that's what I want to hear. I've been hearing yeah. Creedence, the Stones, and the Beatles my whole life, and now I'm hearing Iron Maiden. So mm. then it was just off from there. It just it took off. I just want to find the heaviest stuff and just found a real passion for it. Um, thrash metal, of course, spoke to me because because of the that time. You know, the the Big Four were in their heyday. So those are the bands. And then once Pantera came out, though, that was that was the band that that really set her over the edge. Um, and so just all those bands that I grew up with, and then as I progressed as a you know, musician in, in early high school and I found hardcore and then started to go to integrate myself into a local scene in, in the Boston area. Um, I found a love for hardcore and punk rock that found its way into my love for metal. And that's kind of where the whole scene in Massachusetts really, really came from mm. is that we all go to thrash metal and original metal and we found hardcore and that's, where this blend came from bands like overcast and cave in uh sam black church um these are bands that were all you know local to massachusetts and really helped develop the sounds of bands like us and kill switch engage um and more of the the, the death metal death core one of the original death core bands out the red chord uh who mike justin was a founding member of these bands were you know influenced by the bands before us and then you know every 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 generation has the bands influenced by, and these are the bands that influenced us, you know, yep. from the, the original Big Four and the you know, Black Sabbath and everything. Um, and then the local the local scene, you know, Sam Black Church, Overcast, Cave-In. These bands are really important um, and really help, you know, develop our sounds. Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, obviously, Unearth is obviously a, a sort of main sort of uh, key point in, in this sort of music history. You know, a lot of bands nowadays have been, uh, you know, influenced by you guys. Uh, you know, how, you know, you're talking about your own influences. How does it feel for the younger generation to be influenced by by your band? Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. As if if you've reached a point in your career where people are influenced by what you've done, that's a great feeling. Um, but we also want to keep going and 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 uh, and be the best. Like we're, we're always trying to get better. And we're trying to influence the next generation. Like I, you know, the band has always set forth, you know, made the statement: we don't want to write uh, a record that's going to compromise our sound, our 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 vision, our integrity of music. So we're not trying to to write a pop record to make millions of dollars. We just want to write heavy records. We've, we've always cited bands like Slayer and Cannibal Corpse and Testament as our as our heroes, as our blueprint. Exodus, you know, just just stay the course write heavy songs that you like, that you want to hear, that you would picture yourself in the pit for, and then just enjoy life, have fun. You know, it may, maybe maybe things get huge, and you, you're always striving to be the next Metallica, but you're not going to write a pop record to be the next Metallica. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and you mentioned before as well, because uh, I did want to touch on this, that uh, obviously Mike has uh, come back to the band. Um, what has that been like? You know, uh, how did that whole thing happen as well? Uh, the whole thing happened. It was, it was, uh, 
it was an explosion about it just just about 10 months ago uh ken uh decided to make a point to to resign from the band and then we were blindsided and within a week uh nick our drummer resigned from the band and so me, Buzz, and, and Chris were just like, what, what, what's, what's going on here? So we knew something was up. And we, we, we had many conversations, but it lasted about a month. And then we were like, all right, let's 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 figure out how to move forward. And, you know, I was talking with Buzz and, and Chris. And like, who, who do we call? We had a few guys in mind, but the, the name that kept on coming 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 back to us was like, well, it makes more sense to Mike Justin in the band because he was in the band in you know our heaviest touring years and the two records are most well received by the public and so we called them up and just kind of felt them out like man we, we love the tour with you again um and he was into it and as soon as we started rehearsing um it went it went really well it was like we didn't miss a beat it had been been 15 years but we didn't miss a second it was the strangest feeling it's like man but we found, we found out a couple of times he plays in Mad Ball, and we, we we always cross paths with those guys because they're our friends. Um, but man, it was it was like no time had passed. It was wild. Um, then then it got weird because Ken tried to come back, and we had a couple of rehearsals, and then it just we didn't we didn't mesh well. So the band's in a strange place with that. So we're we've mutually parted ways with Ken. He's he'll always be a face of on Earth because the band's twenty five years old at this point. So. Um, there's no uh, distaste towards Ken. There's nothing that we're going to say is negative about him. It's just that the band is better off currently without him in the band. Um, and we're extremely happy to have Mike back. And that dynamic really meshes well with the current members of the band. Uh, so it's it was a weird process how it got there, but it got there. And then we got Peter Lehman on guitar, who filled in for buzz in australia in 2005 and our first time in australia so mm -hmm. peter was going to fill in he's going to replace buzz way back then because buzz couldn't tour full-time and he had a career job and he was going to leave the band but then things were going so so well that he decided to not pursue that career that, that he was in and and tour with us so peter peter didn't get the position but we've always stayed in contact and so it's it's not like we have all the new guys coming in. We have Mike back and then Peter back. So it's yeah, we feel really good about these guys. And as soon as we had our first show in Europe this summer, um, the chemistry's been been better than than you know maybe ever for this band. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to advertise this product. It just <laughs> you see it from the live performances that there's a bunch of videos on our socials. All our socials are on Earth official, and you can just see. The chemistry that we have with these five guys and we're having we're having a fucking great time and uh we hope that translates to people because we're having so much fun on the road on stage on and off stage and so uh we're all behind this record we're all rehearsing these songs together and we we're we're so excited to get back on the road and, and uh and tour a lot more than we have been um for the past 10 years yeah definitely uh well glad it's worked out all well for you guys then and uh glad to see you back in australia it's been as i said a long time coming so uh any last words for the aussie fans before you uh, arrive on our shores looking forward to seeing you all um uh, thanks for all the support uh, i know a lot a lot of bands don't make it down eight times we hope to make it down eight eight more times so uh see you see you at the gigs appreciate you all and uh new record the wretched the ruinous comes out in may Awesome, man. Well, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it.